Hey guys, welcome back to Me Finding With Jesse, the life coach. I hope everybody's having a fantastic day. So today we are going to be talking about a topic that keeps people trapped more than they know. It keeps them trapped from going towards their dreams. It keeps them trapped in a mindset that is one-sided. It keeps them trapped from truly giving in a healthy dynamic, right? Any type of dynamic whether it's personal relationships, whether it's romantic partnerships, it just keeps people stuck, right? It's a dynamic that closes off your consciousness and doesn't help you evolve and personally grow as an individual. And that is going to be all about entitlement. Entitlement, entitlement, entitlement. And entitlement, like everything else, like I always tell people, has a spectrum, it has a scale. So some people have that little portion of entitlement where sometimes they don't consider others and they don't realize it. And there's people who are like huge, they're big up there on that spectrum where they think the world revolves around them. But whether you are large on the scale or you're, you know, on the lower division of entitlement, it doesn't make a difference because entitlement will actually keep you trapped from personal development and today we are going to be talking about it we're going to be talking about entitlement and all its entity and sometimes it's just so hidden we don't even realize it right we don't even realize it because it's deep down like always in that subconscious mind of ours you know we're just operating on default not realizing that when we start taking off those layers piece by piece by piece that what when we really get down to the problem that it's about entitlement so I'm going to be talking all about it. I'm going to be sharing some examples of it. I am going to be talking about how to release yourself and not get caught up in that entitlement mindset. So first things first, let's define what entitlement is, right? So when we talk about entitlement, we're talking about an individual who believes they deserve some special treatment. They believe they deserve special privileges. They believe that they deserve something that they technically haven't earned, right? So they believe that either somebody or someone or the world should give them something that they truly haven't earned. Not only have they truly not earned it, but they might not be reciprocating, right? Entitlement gets down to you're asking for something that you have not put in, right? You haven't put in the work, right? You walk around kind of with a double standard attitude, right? Like, I can do this, but I don't want people to do this to me, right? When you are entitled, you make unrealistic demands on others, right? You might not be putting in the work, the time, the energy into something, but you expect it in return, right? So that's what entitlement is all about. And if you're not careful, it can lead to a very one-sided situation, right? So that's why it's so important to monitor your entitlement. And I believe that everybody has some form of entitlement whether we want to admit it or not. But that's what this channel is all about, right? My channel is all about kind of diving deep, looking into our own behaviors, our own mindsets, so we can release from that to make ourselves a better version of who we want to be, who we want to become, right? So like I said, I believe everybody has some form of entitlement. And the reason why I say that is because as human beings, we focus on our own needs, we focus on our own wants, we focus on our own desires, our own pleasures. You know, at times that can get a little extreme and it can become a me, me, me attitude and we forget to consider other people. We can we forget to consider who's involved in scenarios with us and we forget to be mindful of other people's feelings. Yes, we all can do that. So that's really what entitlement gets down to, right? When you start becoming entitled, you start thinking that your feelings, your wants, your needs, whatever you feel that you want and you need, you put it as a priority. It's the first thing you think of and you think of yourself before you think of others, right? And I'm gonna be sharing some examples of how that actually happens. And we don't even realize it. We don't even label it as entitlement because we don't see it. Like I said, it's deep down in our subconscious. But if we don't bring this to our awareness and we don't come to the realization that this is entitlement and we don't start releasing ourselves from it, we wind up in very unhappy situations. Not only do we wind up unhappy, but we wind up putting our happiness, we wind up putting our feelings, our contentment, our joys, our wants and needs, like the fulfillment of that, we put it onto others, right? And then we expect them to fulfill this need in us when we all should be doing that for ourselves, right? Doing the work for ourselves, not putting it on 
to someone else. So the first example I'm gonna share with you about entitlement might not seem like an entitled person in the very beginning, but when you start taking off those layers, you start realizing it all comes down to entitlement, right? So this is a recent situation that I wind up coming into. And it was about this one lady who was commenting on a situation that happened with the housewives of Atlanta. So you might be familiar with the situation. I'm not sure. I'm not. I was just privileged to the conversation with this lady. So she basically, the lady who commented on the photo was commenting on a dynamic of one housewife who just recently had a baby. She went to go visit another housewife who had an animal, had a dog, had a pet. After viewing the photo, the woman had mentioned there was no way in hell that that animal, that dog, that pet would have been around her or her child. And that when you go to visit a friend, that out of respect, it's that friend's responsibility to lock up their animal when you come over, when you come to visit, because not everyone, you know, not everyone likes animals and not everyone is an animal person, right? So I would think that a lot of people who are not like crazy about animals or they may probably have had a trauma with an animal or they're just not animal people, right? They might feel the same way. Like out of respect, it's the other person's responsibility if you come to visit their house to lock up their animals. So let's really look at this situation, right? So in her saying that, she basically is saying that her friend is responsible for her traumas. Her friend is responsible for her feelings. Her friend is responsible to cater to her. Her friend is responsible to cater to her needs, cater to the fact that she doesn't like animals or she doesn't care for animals. And it's her responsibility because it is her home to make sure that her friend feels comfortable. Right? When you look at this at surface level, you might agree. You might say, well, okay, when someone comes to my house, yes, I want to make them comfortable, right? Which is true. You want to make people feel comfortable, especially if it's a friend. But is it technically your responsibility to take on somebody else's feelings? Or is it the responsibility of the person who has the trauma, who's not comfortable around pets, who is not a pet person? Are they responsible for their own feelings? Are they responsible and should have enough respect for themselves, right? To respect their feelings, to acknowledge their feelings and not put themselves in that compromising position, right? So it kind of makes you think, right? And when you start pulling those layers off, like I said, it kind of all leads down to entitlement, right? So if you think about it, right? When you go to someone's house, when you visit someone's home, how have you earned the right to tell them how to conduct themselves in their own home? Have you really earned the right to tell them to lock up their pets and have their pets suffer, right? Being behind wherever they're, they're behind while you visit, while you're in the comfort, while your feelings and your wants and your needs are being attended to. Is it fair to ask that of a friend, right? Have you earned that right? Have you earned that privilege, right? And if you think about it, when we talk about earn, you probably might say, hmm, let's, let's examine that a little bit deeper. Well, earning it is saying that you contribute to that household. Like, do you contribute to that friend's mortgage? Do you contribute to the bills? Do you contribute in any other way that you have that, that right to say, I expect this to be done when I come to visit, right? Do, have you really earned that right? Or is this a case of entitlement, right? A case of entitlement that I should be respected. This is the thing. When you talk about visiting someone, someone's home, right? You can't go into their home with an expectation that they are to behave in a certain manner. It should be your responsibility to address your own feelings. It should be your own responsibility to be mindful of what's going to make you feel uncomfortable, right? It also should be your responsibility to think about your friend and her pets and her home, right? If you really think about it, that's, that's the dog's home. That is his home. He lives there every single day. And by you asking for that pet to be locked up, you're putting that homeowner, your friend, in a compromising position. You're also putting that pet in a compromising position. And a lot of people will ask this of a friend because it's just a pet. That's the way they see it, right? I'm superior. I'm a human being. And my feelings matter more than this pet's feelings, right? So I'm up here. And that's what entitlement is all about. It's about feeling superior to certain people, certain dynamics, you feel more intelligent, you feel more deserving. That's what it's all about, right? You're not thinking, you're not considering the pet's feelings because they're just a pet. 
it's just a dog. It doesn't make it doesn't make a difference, right? And you're not considering your friend how you're putting them in a compromising position by asking them to do the such. And you're not also considering how you are leading with expectations. You're expecting someone else to be in charge and put your feelings, wants, and needs as a priority in front of their own you know, wants and needs, right? Because usually if you own a pet and you have a pet, you might treat that pet like a family member, right? You're not considering that though. You don't see it in that way, right? Your perspective is all about me. Your perspective is I don't like animals. Your perspective is I had a trauma with animals. Your your you know, your perspective is I don't want to be around an animal. But to, you know, and your perspective is they're just an animal. It's no big deal, right? It's only for a few hours. But to that pet owner, that's not just an animal. That's a family member, right? That's a family member. That's someone that's been by their side when they're sick. That's someone that's been by their side when they're sad. That's someone that brings them company when they're lonely. That's someone that, that will give their life for them. That's someone that will probably give their life for their kids if they have any, right? And for those pet owners, asking them to put away their pet and lock up their pet is on the same scale of you asking them to put away and lock away their kids, right? So let's think about that. Let's take away the pet aspect of it, right? And let's put in a, a human being, right? Would you go to someone's house and say, you know what, I really don't like, I don't like kids. I'm not a kid person, right? Right? Kids could be loud, they could be dirty, right? They could be all kinds of things, right? When we really get to the, to the bones and grits of it, right? And some people are not tolerant of kids. So if you go to someone else's house and that's the way you feel personally about kids, right and let's say you don't have kids and you don't want to have kids and you're just like ugh, kids right and you go to this person's house and they have kids and would you ask them to lock up their kids and say well listen you know what i don't like kids so the expectation is when i come over i expect you to lock up your kids oh let's go one step deeper let's say you know you go visit your friend and you don't like their husband right you just don't like them you don't care for them do you go with the expectation that they're going to send their husband away to just entertain you and make you feel better because you have a personal issue with their husband right because you feel a certain way you feel you feel like mm, i don't want to be around this person so it's my friend's duty to cater to me right no you will never ask that right most people will never ask that entitled people yes they will ask it why because it's all about me right so the first step of releasing yourself from entitlement and not thinking in an entitled way, right, is to respect yourself. Like this woman felt like it was a disrespect to her to have these animals around knowing that she doesn't like animals. But like I said, is it your friend's responsibility or is it your responsibility to take responsibility for your own feelings, right? You should be respecting yourself. That is your job to respect your own feelings to be accountable for your own feelings to be accountable uh, putting yourself in compromising positions and also to think of everyone involved in the scenario whether or not it is an animal or not right so how will you handle a situation like that right when you're trying to release yourself from entitlement well you, you you're honest right someone invites you over you're not a pet person you don't want to ask of them to lock up their pets then say hey you know what I'm not a big pet person I know you have a dog so you know I love that you invited me over but I was thinking not to put anybody in a compromising position how about we meet at a restaurant how about we meet at this place how about we go out to brunch right that way you're not putting anyone in a compromising position right you're not putting the expectation on your feelings onto someone else your happiness and you know you feeling comfortable onto someone else and at the same token everybody's everybody's happy right you get what you want they get what they want the pet roams, roams free you don't have to have that discussion about who's responsible for anything because technically it's your responsibility now that's one scenario but we see the scenarios in every single day life of entitlement right so let's let's think about all the ways that people feel entitled right so the kid who graduates from college they do four years in a university right once they come out, they feel entitled. They feel privileged that a job is going to be waiting for them. Or they feel like, I'm gonna graduate from college, right? And I'm gonna just land that dream job. I'm gonna land that, that job that pays me $70,000, $80,000. But have they earned it? Have they really earned it? Have they put in the work to earn such a, you know, a title? Have they, have they put anything into their career? If you really think about it, no. All they did was better themselves by going to college, right? So college never promises that you're gonna, you know, it's gonna lead to a career, 
what it what it states is that if you have a four-year degree you put yourself in a better position to get into the career field that you want right you might put yourself in a better position that you have that degree that you have the educational background but what we fail to realize is that we don't have that education in the field right so that's that's a that's a sense of entitlement right i deserve i deserve because i have this four-year degree but college technically just teaches you about yourself when you go to college that's a gift that you give to yourself. Like I've had this discussion a lot with some of the kids that I coach, right? They feel like they're gonna go to college and they're gonna come out and they're gonna just land, boom, this dream career, this dream job. And for some, it does happen, right? And for others, it doesn't happen. And then they wind up super resentful, right? It's like, oh my God, I wasted my money. Oh my God, I wasted four years of my life. But those four years of your life, they did teach you a lot. They taught you a lot about yourself. They taught you a lot about your motivation. They taught you a lot about meeting deadlines. It taught you a lot about being responsible. So college is not only about going to college to just earn a career. It's so much more than that, but because everybody's looking at it from this entitled sense, from these entitled eyes, they don't see it that way, right? So let's talk about other ways that entitlement kind of pushes our way through how we see things, right? Our perspective. Recently, there was a meme that went around that stated that if you are not a healthy person, you still deserve love. Deserve, right? So let's talk about that. Do you truly deserve a romantic relationship when you haven't earned it? right uh, do you deserve a healthy person when you are not healthy yourself so the meme went into like if I have anxiety and I have depression and I have low self-esteem and I don't have my finances together and I don't have this together and I'm all over the place and I don't know what I want and I'm not consistent I still deserve love right well you have love right you have love from your family members you have love from your friends you have love from the people you're around but just because you want love, does that mean that you're entitled to love? Not only did the meme talk about that they were entitled to love, but it also talked about they were entitled to another healthy person, right? So it's like you putting that once again, your feelings, your wants, and your happiness onto another person. If you really think about this meme and like stripping off those layers and going deep, right? Does an unhealthy person deserve a healthy person? As an unhealthy person who you have not even worked on yourself, that you're so fearful that you cannot face yourself, that you don't wanna do the work for yourself, right? Because we all have the ability to heal ourselves. We all have the ability to go deep within ourselves, right? But some people don't want to do the work, right? They want to just go through life and push themselves onto others. And the expectation is you're going to heal me, right? You're going to have, I'm going to have this profound love that's going to be amazing. That's going to come from you. That's going to heal me. But nobody's in charge and nobody's responsible for healing us but us, right? We need to do the work and put the attention, the love, all of that towards ourselves. We need to put it inward, right? And then once you do that and you might find another person, then you could come together. Romantic love and relationships is not something that we are entitled to, right? It's something that we earn. It's something that we work towards, right? Healthy relationships, anyone who's had a healthy relationship, a healthy partnership knows that it takes work. What we right? talk about when we talk about work, we're talking about that you work on yourself. You work on your communication skills, right? You work on communicating with one another. You work on not feeling entitled because when you are entitled is that me attitude. It's, you know, my wants, my desires come first, right? Well, when you're in a relationship, you got to compromise, right? It's not all about you anymore. It's about us. It's about what's good for us, not what's only good for me, right? And if you are an unhealthy person, you're not going to be able to see life through those eyes because you're only looking for someone to heal you. You're only looking for someone to love you. You feel like you're entitled to it, but you haven't earned it. You don't want to put in the work into yourself, but you want someone else to invest in you and you haven't even invested in yourself, right? So that's a form of entitlement. I'm entitled to love. No, nobody's entitled to love. The only thing you're entitled to do is to love yourself. And once you love yourself, then, then you can attract a healthy partnership and a healthy love, right? Because if you, are not, if you are unhealthy and you're looking for a healthy person, all you are going to do is damage that person. That's exactly what's going to happen. And a person who's worked on themselves, a person who has taken time to reflect, to go in deep, to work on characteristics that they don't like. So like even things like entitlement, right? 
Like I said, we all have a form of it, right? It's about becoming aware to it and always think about others in scenarios, right? So if this person has sat down and released themselves for entitlement and work on themselves every single day, why do you feel as an unhealthy person that you are entitled to a person of that caliber? A person who's not afraid to face themselves. You're not. You're not entitled to that, right? You are not. You haven't earned it, right? So once again, another form of entitlement. So entitlement is all around us, especially with family members, right? I recently had a situation, right? For the upcoming holiday, I was hosting Thanksgiving, right? And I had a family member who was supposed to come and visit. To make a long story short, they did not make the commute. And when I asked what was the issue, they had said, well, it was last minute, which it wasn't, right? So they had said it was last minute and you know, that it was a big issue for them to commute. Like they had to take mass transportation and they had to walk upstairs to get to like the transportation that comes to my home. And I said, oh, okay, I see. I see, I said that that was a big inconvenience for you. And they said, yeah. I said, okay. And so my response was, well, did you consider the inconvenience that I had to go through to prepare the meal for Thanksgiving? And then I went into the details. Like when you host for Thanksgiving or any holiday, right? Number one, it takes funds, it takes money. When you're feeding a lot of people or for those type of holidays, right? We tend to eat a lot of dishes, right? That's part of the tradition, right? So I said, okay, so did, they, did this person take into consideration the amount of money I had to spend on different dishes, right? Just a turkey alone can cost up to $20, $25, right? And that's just one component. When you plan to host for these special occasions, it, it can cost money, right? You were talking about $100 plus, right? Just for that meal, for that right? meal to be able to host. Not only does it take money, but it takes time, right? So in my instance, I couldn't find all my ingredients that I need at one specific, you know, supermarket. So I had to go to, you know, numerous supermarkets. So what did that require? That required my time, right? That required me going from different places to different places to different places to get what I needed, right? To, you know, have the, those specific ingredients for the meal. So not only did it take money, did it take time, but also it took more time, right? That I had to invest in preparing the meal, right? So with Thanksgiving and Christmas and things of that sort, a lot of the times, like the things that we're preparing, right? It takes, you need prep time, you know? Right? So like if you're doing appetizers and, um, you know, things of that sort, right? You have to prepare that ahead of time. Even if you're buying items that are already prepared, that still takes time to heat up, right? Sometimes you can't make all of your items all at the same time, right? Like if your turkey has to be at a certain temperature, you have to make that, you know, alone. If you have that type of oven, you gotta wait till that comes out to put the next item in and the next item in. So we're talking about hours that you could be dedicating to one meal so those were like components of what i had to deal with right it takes a lot of standing right you got to get up super early at times to make sure everything gets prepared in the same day you know that it's prepared by that dinner time or whenever you want to start hosting your guests and then in my specific situation these family members were going to stay for the weekend they were going to stay for three four days so not only did i have to worry about the meal the prep and all that stuff but I also had to buy additional food, right? To make sure that they're all taken care of. And I went out of my, my, my way to consider, you know, different things that they like, right? So like specific milks and some specific this and specific that, make sure that they I had that in the house, right? To accommodate them. Not only that, but I had to clean the house, right? I had to, you know, make sure that they were all ready in my guest room, prep the, you know, guest room, make sure that linens were prepared and so on and so forth, right? So that was all that part that I had to do on, on, on me, right? And it was all on me. I was one person doing all of that. So I actually explained this to the person. I said, well, I understand the effort that you were making, but did you even think about that effort that I was putting in, right? No, they just thought about like, I have to commute. They only thought about the inconvenience or how they felt it was an inconvenience to them but never considered all the hours and everything else that I had to put into make this dinner special for them, right? So that is a clear example of entitlement, right? When we are entitled, we think of only ourselves. We only think of what we're sacrificing. We only think about our efforts. We only think about our needs, our wants, right? And we're not considering what anybody else is going through. We're not considering what other people are contributing, right? Their efforts that they're putting into whatever the dynamic is as well. So like I said, sometimes entitlement could come out in these little ways that we don't even realize right anytime that we're not considering others and we're only considering ourselves 
The underlining when you take off all those layers is about entitlement. Entitlement, when you all get down to it, it's a sense of selfishness. It's a, se it's a sense of self-centeredness, right? We're thinking about me, me, me. We're thinking about taking, taking, taking. Like this family member, they were gonna come here and take the meal, right? Take the night stay, take this, take that. But what they were giving? What all they had to give was make their way to my house. That was the part that they needed to give. But in that part, that effort, they felt that they couldn't do it. It was too much on their part. It was too much on their side, right? And that's what happens when we become entitled. So there's so many ways that entitlement kind of creeps up on us that we need to be aware of, right? Not only that, but it damages us. Like I said, it holds us back, right? Sometimes we, we go into things and we just think that we are deserving of it, right? It holds us back in so many ways in life, right? Like the person who wants to make a business, right? And they start the business and they put in a little bit in the very beginning. And they're like, but I'm not seeing any type of, uh, you know, feedback. Like I'm not getting anything in return. Well, sometimes it takes years. I'm talking about years to dedicate to your business in order to get, to get out what you put in, right? But a lot of people don't want to put in that work. They feel entitled. They feel like, okay, I gave five hours last week. I deserve this but do you really deserve it, right? So that's what I mean by like entitled can keep you so, so stuck in life, right? Not only that, but it can hinder our relationships because we only think of ourselves and we need to think of everyone in dynamics. If you really wanna grow as a person, it will be beneficial to you to start looking at your attitude, start looking at your behavior, start looking at your actions, right? Because when you start doing that and you start taking accountability for yourself, right? You start checking yourself, that's real growth, that's real development, right? And you're able to say, okay, I see that, you know, maybe I'm not being fair to other people. Maybe I see how I'm not um, giving what I want, right? And that's why I'm not getting what I want in return because I'm not giving it, right? Then you start, you might start seeing that maybe you are a taker. You are someone who takes, takes, takes and doesn't give, right? You're not giving, right? A lot of times, like I mentioned in, in, in relationships, we want people to bend to us. We want people to give us things that we're not even willing to give to ourselves, right? We put our happiness onto them and that's not fair. It's not fair. Fair. And in order for these situations to become balanced and for us to have healthy partnerships, and that's all relationships, because I even mentioned family dynamics, right? We have to be fair to others. We have to give what we're willing to accept, right? We can't just accept and not give, right? We got to put in as much effort as we want others to put into us. We got to invest not only in them, but invest in ourselves as well. Take accountability for ourselves. The way to avoid going that rabbit hole of entitlement is to always ask yourself, three questions. The first right? question you want to ask yourself is what I'm asking for. Is it fair? Right? Always ask yourself what you're asking for or the behavior that you want or the investment you want someone else to make into you. Ask yourself what I'm asking for. Is it fair Two. Right? Always ask yourself, am I considering others? Right? You always got to ask yourself, are you considering everybody else's needs, everybody else's wants, everybody else's effort? Always ask yourself that, right? Because if you don't, then you're only considering yourself and you're being selfish, right? And when we are selfish, it's that's a way of showing our maturity level, right? When a, when a person is balanced and they are mature, they're always gonna think about everybody included in a dynamic or situation, right? That's the way to be fair. That's the way to keep relationships and dynamics balanced. You have to think of everyone, not just yourself. And the next question to ask yourself is, have I earned what I desired, right? Always ask yourself that question. Because like I said, so many people are asking for things that they haven't even invested in. They just want it. They just feel like I should be a priority. I deserve this. I'm superior. And a lot of the times when you sit down and really think about it, you haven't even put in the work. You haven't even put in the work for what you're asking for right and i mentioned that through these examples right the relationship everybody wants that everybody wants that perfect marriage or that perfect relationship well have you worked on yourself have you earned it have you really worked on your character have you worked on how to give as a partner have you worked on your communication skills have you worked on equal give and take have you worked on compromising have you really worked on it have you earned that relationship that you dream and desire of, right? Have you earned that marriage? That marriage, you might have a marriage that's falling apart. 
Well, are you putting the work into it? Or are you putting it as a back burner? Like, okay, that, 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 that's over here. It's my partner's responsibility to do this, to do that, to do this. But when you really think about it, are you giving as much? Have you earned it? You know, that business that you're trying to go towards, are you earning it? Are you earning the reciprocity you want to get from that business? Are you taking every single day to focus on it, right? Everything that you're asking for, ask yourself, have you earned what you want? If you want something out of life, are you putting in the work, right? I was recently talking to a friend about their health, right? and focusing on themselves and they were telling me that they you know they're super stressed out and they started developing started manifesting outside of themselves right and i asked have you been putting priority to your health have you been focusing on yourself and the answer was no well you want your health to be at its maximum but you don't want to put in the work this is a sense of entitlement right we believe that certain things should be a certain way we believe that we're just gonna get it but we don't want to put in the work so guys stop putting in the work ask yourself have i really earned what i am desiring and if the answer is no get to work get to work start working your ass off for the life that you want okay. right start thinking of others the world does not revolve around us the, you know and that's a big part of entitlement we think that the world revolves around us we think that the world is going to cater to us we think that the world is supposed to be nice to us that the expectation is that people are going to fall in line with what we want right and that's a bad attitude to have because you're always i mean always going to wind up disappointment if you have expectations on how other people are going to behave if you're putting in your happiness onto others you're, you're always going to wind up disappointed get something you have to give you gotta give a little you can't just expect to have everything you want and expect life to just be good to us because we are good people right so guys i hope this video gives you something to really think about right reflect on you know if you're feeling short change in life or you're not getting what you want it might be that you're suffering from a sense of entitlement right and like i said with all my videos you have to be honest with yourself look at yourself right really look at yourself look at your behavior and ask yourself some of these questions right are you giving in order to get and are you thinking of others right or is it just a me attitude and if it is then you know what you have to do so guys i will see you in my next one bye